All right, so we're ready to do the emboss step. Um, at this point, we've laid out all of our holes for our pattern transfer, so we know that our steel plates are gonna be able to fit there, and we're getting ready to transfer this crane shape into the pauldron below. And so what I'm gonna do before I start anything is just gently wet the region that I intend to transfer my crane into, and that's going to make it easier for when I apply pressure to transfer the pattern and uh, allow the leather to really absorb the dents. Um, depending on what you have, if you have like a metal pokey or a ballpoint pen that's dead, that's gonna work great. But we're gonna just use the back of my paintbrush because that will be sufficient. So right now I'm just using some tape to hold my pattern in place. So that way when I do my tracing, um, it's just gonna show up a little easier and it's not gonna move. So you can do this with your Sharpie. You can do this with a ballpoint pen. You can do this with a chopstick. Doesn't really matter. You're just trying to make a pattern that's obviously gonna come to something you can see. But when you have little details like these lines here in the crane design um, or the eyeball, it's really important that you have something that's got a tiny point or you're using the edge of it. So. Like I said, uh, the paintbrush is really helpful. It's got a small point. It's soft, just you know, wide enough for you to grab, but hard enough for you to apply pressure. And just know your paper template is going to be destroyed at the end of this. It may look like it's still intact, but don't expect to get more than one use out of it. So as I do my stippling, I'm just sort of pressing on that perimeter to make sure that the leather does in fact respond to the contouring that I'm doing. And you'll notice that I'm ignoring the intersection of the cranes in the rest of the drawing. Those aren't part of what I'm trying to capture. So in my mind's eye, I'm just transferring the individual component I want and ignoring this contour right here. So you got plenty of time to work. And as long as you apply a good hard pressure the pattern will transfer nicely, but the trick here is to remember that you've got to push hard. And this takes a while. Um, I thought about time-lapsing this, but ultimately I think if you get a close-up so you can see how the process works, you can get a much better idea of the best way to do your stipling transfer when you're doing the project yourself. So think about what details are important in your drawing, what deal details are not. I like using a monochromatic image, meaning that you know it's just black and white, so you know that you're either stipling all of the black or you're stipling all of the white. It makes it very clear what's part of your design and what you don't need to worry about until later. So if you have a grayscale, you have to make all these decisions about whether or not that should be included and um, that can be a little trickier when you're just trying to draw clean lines through a piece of paper onto another material. So we want to make it as simple as possible. So we're almost done. I'm just following up that perimeter. And even though this line border of the metal is close to the wing border, we want to make sure that we still transfer that pattern over so that we can see everything. And before you get excited and think you're done, be sure to go back and check. If you're not sure you press down, if you don't see tiny divots in the paper, let's see if we can show you tiny divots, right? If you don't see this um, perimeter here of all the markings where you've done your emboss, you may need to go back. And it's really hard to line up this transfer pattern again so I always take the time to make sure that I've really <laughs> mangled the paper in the perimeter of my design so I know that at some point I will see some indication of where I think um, my crane pattern should be. So if you poke through your paper, that's okay. Um, you just want to know that you've traced your border fully and that any design you choose to do after that is going to be fairly obvious. So I've gone through the whole thing. I feel satisfied that I have most of my design. 
gravity. Um, now we need to make sure that our pattern transferred. So we're going to lift that up. So here's the funny part about when you take your pattern and you do a transfer and there's still ink on the other side. Okay, You can use this to your advantage with um, carbon pattern transfer paper, or you can just take a look and see how the ink has sort of made the markation of where the wing is going to be. And then you can also see the body here. Very subtle, but if I give it the right light, it's a pretty obvious transfer. So from there, I can switch to my Sharpie and do the emboss for the outline. And I think for that one, we're just going to do a time lapse, but uh, you get an idea of what we're trying to go for.